the source of up to half of the Earth's internal heat is completely unknown, and here's how to hunt for it. Fizz.org, Charleston Monroe and Michael Layton of The Conversation. It may not be obvious while lying in the sun on a hot summer's day, but a considerable amount of heat is also coming from below you, emanating from deep within the Earth. This heat is equivalent to more than three times the total power consumption of the entire world, and it drives important geological processes, such as the movement of tectonic plates and the flow of magma near the surface of the Earth. But despite this, where exactly up to half of this heat actually comes from is still a mystery. It's thought that a type of neutrinos, particles with extremely low mass, emitted by radioactive processes in the Earth's interior, may provide important clues to solving this mystery. The problem is that they are nearly impossible to catch. But in a new paper published in the journal Nature Communications, we have set out to do just that, in a way. The known sources of heat from the Earth's interior are radioactive decays and residual heat from when our planet was first formed. The amount of heating from radioactivity, estimated based on the measurements of the composition of rock samples, is highly uncertain, accounting for anywhere from 25 to 90 percent of the total heat flow. Elusive particles? Atoms in radioactive materials have unstable nuclei, meaning they can split up, that is, decay to a stable state, by giving off nuclear radiation, some of which gets converted to heat. This radiation consists of various particles with specific energies depending on what material emitted them, including neutrinos. When the radioactive elements decay within the Earth's crust and mantle, they emit geoneutrinos. In fact, the second, each second, the Earth radiates more than a trillion trillion such particles to space. Measuring their energy can tell researchers about what material produced them and therefore the composition of the Earth's hidden interior. The main known sources of radioactivity within the Earth are unstable types of uranium, thorium, and potassium, something we know based on samples of rock up to 200 kilometers below the surface. What lurks beneath that depth is unknown. We know that the geoneutrinos emitted when uranium decays have more energy than those emitted when potassium splits up. So by measuring the energy of geoneutrinos, we can know what type of radioactive material they came from. In fact, this is a much easier way to figure out what's inside the Earth than drilling tens of kilometers down below the surface. Unfortunately, geoneutrinos are notoriously difficult to detect. Rather than interacting with ordinary matter, such as that inside detectors, they tend to just whiz right through them. That's why it took a huge underground detector filled with about a thousand tons of liquid to make the first observation of geoneutrinos in 2003. These detectors measure neutrinos by registering their collisions with atoms in the liquid. Since then, only one other experiment has managed to observe geoneutrinos using a similar technology. Both measurements imply that approximately half of the Earth's heat caused by radioactivity, 20 terawatts, can be explained by decays of uranium and thorium. The source of the remaining 50% is an open question. However, measurements so far have been unable to measure the contribution from potassium decays. The neutrinos emitted in this process have too low an energy, so it could be that the rest of the heat comes from potassium decay. New technology. Our new research suggests we can make up a map, make a map of heat flow from inside the Earth by measuring the direction of geoneutrino comes from, where the geoneutrino comes from, as well as its energy. This sounds simple, but the technological challenge is formidable, requiring new particle detection technology. We propose using gas-filled time projection chamber detectors. Such detectors work by making a 3D picture of a geoneutrino colliding with a gas inside it, knocking off an electron from a gas atom. The movement of this electron can then be tracked over time 
to reconstruct one dimension of the process, that is time. High resolution imaging technology can then reconstruct the two spatial dimensions of its movement in the liquid detectors currently used, the particles that get knocked off in collisions travel such a short distance because they are in the liquid that the direction is impossible to resolve. Similar detectors on a smaller scale are currently used to make precision measurements of neutrino interactions and to search for dark matter. We calculated that the size of the detector needed to discover the geoneutrinos from radioactive potassium would be 20 tons. To properly map the mantle composition for the first time, it would need to be 10 times more massive. We have built a prototype for such a detector and are working on scaling it up. Measuring geoneutrinos in this way could help map the heat flow in the Earth's interior. This would help us to understand the evolution of the inner core by assessing the concentration of radioactive elements. It could also help unravel the long-standing mystery of what source of heat pow powers the convection, that is the transfer of heat by movement of fluids, in the outer core that generates the Earth's geomagnetic field. This field is vital for retaining our atmosphere, which protects life on Earth from the sun's harmful radiation. And uh, we will be having right after this video, another video having to do with the Earth's geomagnetic field, the weakening, cosmic rays coming in, neutro uh, neutrons and mutation rate in evolution of humans, which is very significant and happens during solar minimum. Now going back to this article, it's strange that we know so little about what's going on under the ground that we walk on, and that makes it exciting to think about how these measurements could finally allow the pioneering exploration of the veiled inner workings of our Earth. And we do have a team that has recorded neutrinos from the Earth's mantle, Bob Yurkafis.org reports, and this was done by a team in Italy, a team of researchers working at the Borexino collaboration at Gran Sasso National Laboratory in Italy. They reported that they've detected neutrinos emanating from the Earth's mantle. Their paper was published in Journal of Physical Review D. They described neutrinos that have been detected at their site and how they came to believe that approximately half of them come from inside the Earth rather than from the crust. Neutrinos, as we know, naturally charge particles that have nearly no mass, making it possible for them to pass through anything, most matter, such as our bodies even. Scientists believe they come into existence as part of radioactive decay and they've been working on ways to prove their existence physically by capturing them with detectors. So this facility in Italy uh, is where the researchers set up a large underground tank filled with 300 metric tons of liquid scintillator. When the neutrino collides with one of its particles of the liquid, a flash of light is emitted indicating that a single neutrino has therefore been detected through the liquid. The team at the site is monitoring the detector since 2007. It's the latest research effort the team is reporting on what have been named geoneutrinos, the neutrinos that come from the Earth, either the crust, many of which are thought to come from man-made nuclear reactors, or the Earth's mantle. These particles are actually antimatter versions of neutrinos. They've been recorded before, and the detections however, were very faint, making it difficult to confirm their source, where they came from. In this effort, though, the team looked at detections occurring over 2,056 days with 5.9 sigma significance, and a large amount of the data allowed the researchers to measure the ratios between neutrinos that emanated from the crust as opposed to the neutrinos that came from the mantle, because for the first time, they were actually able to distinguish between those that came from the crust and those from the mantle. They also believe most, if not all, of the neutrinos originate in either uranium-238 or thorium-232 and estimate that 53 of the 77 detected geoneutrinos emanated from the crust and that they were from man-made sources. Now, this work was done by the team is likely to help scientists gain a better understanding 
of how radioactive decay of material inside the Earth drives other processes, including the convection uh, over of the uh, Earth's mantle over the period, period long periods of time the, of the rock in the mantle, which of course uh, they say is what uh, causes our geomagnetic field and allows us to have our atmosphere. I'll leave links below for you for this. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.